black pepper and allspice. So you, this is this is right from your place. Yes, I don't, yeah. I don't mean from your kitchen, but you. We cure it. we cured it. Uh, it takes uh, two to three weeks to uh, dry cure. Uh, smoke it for ten hours and then steam it for three hours. Wow. Mm. I wish I, I wish <laughs> you could taste this. <laughs> I honestly do. Um, how long is, have you been around? Has your business been there? Uh, we're uh, uh, just coming on three years now. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience, and uh, we've been really embraced by the public. And I'm just, I'm just honored that uh, people have embraced us so much. And if you, do you have a restaurant uh, past? I have been a uh, waiter for mm -hmm. about 20 years. And this was a little dream of mine about 10 years ago to open up my own little uh, smokehouse barbecue joint and uh, diner. And you opened it up three years ago? Yes. Wow, that was sort of right at the beginning of the recession. Yes, it was. Nice timing, Tom. Yeah, very scary. Yes, but every time I go by there, and I drive by a couple times a week, there's always people in the place. It's always packed. Uh, um, it's becoming quite a destination. Um, I think uh, the food sort of speaks for itself because mm -hmm. we do make everything in-house. Uh, except for the breads and and your and your fried chicken, yes. That Bill raves about. What what makes that so special? Uh, it's all about the brining. Yeah. And so we brine it for uh, twenty four hours. And and what do you make? What, what is what do you well, use? Well, there's the uh, sugar. There's uh, salt. Uh, some aromatics, which I can't tell you. Which, everything that's in there's a little bay leaf. Yeah. Some lemon pepper. Um, uh, with that being said. Uh, then after we take it out of the brine, then we put it into a, a buttermilk bath, let's say, for another 24 hours. And that's got cayenne and, and pepper and all spice in that as well. And then we fry it for about six, 13 minutes. Wow. That's an awful lot of work to, you, to go through. Well, that's what it takes that's to make good fried that's chicken. That, yeah, well, all exactly. His, now, all of his food is like that. I mean, how long did it take you to do the ribs? Uh, ribs, um, they take about uh, nine and a half hours to ten yeah. hours. And, and, uh, we, uh, the, and what do you do? You, you cure them, smoke them? Uh, we put a uh, dry rub on them. Uh, then we cook them over um, hardwood. I use apple and hickory. We start off our smoker with coals. We probably have the only uh, smoker in Toronto that's all wood-fired as well. So um, uh, that all will start off first thing in the morning. Let the smoker come up to temp, uh, to temp with the ribs in it. And so that's why it takes about 10 hours. So usually if your smoker is hot, about six, seven hours, your ribs uh, will be done. Right, and and are, there, are the ribs sort of the number one item on your menu? Uh, we only do them three days a week because of uh, the uh, wood-fired smoker. So on the off days, uh, we're doing pastrami, we're doing uh, uh, pulled pork, pork butts, uh, barbecue beef brisket. Uh, we make our own bacon as well. So um, with the fact that the smoker is wood-fired, we can only do one smoke a day because all the renderings and, and the smoker is still hot. So it's not where... Um, at other barbecue restaurants or whatnot, they usually have a, it's either gas or electric powered smoker and all the safety features in that. So um, they can cool it right down and put another load in where we cannot do that. Now you, it's it's not a large establishment. What, what do you see, about 30, 40 people? Uh, no, about 18 people. 18 people? Yes, so about 90% of our business is takeout. And you do a lot of takeout? Yes. Yeah, a lot of lineups are yeah. ridiculous. Now, uh, when, when, when you look around at the competition that you face, I mean, this pulled pork sandwiches have become very, very popular yes, they have. Uh, uh, these days. Do you, do you look at it in, in the sense that you think, okay, well, a lot of these pulled pork sandwiches that people make are mediocre, and this is a good thing for me, comparatively speaking, or do you look at it and say, this is not necessarily a good thing because if people have, have experienced it once or twice and think it's not that good, they're going to start thinking it's the pulled pork itself and that the concept for this sandwich is, is not a sound one. Well, I, I'm going to take this to a different point. Um, everybody seems to be an expert on, <laughs> pull, on when it comes to barbecue. No shortage. <laughs> right. So my, uh, uh, the best barbecue is a barbecue that's in front of me at, the, at this point. Um, pulled pork, everyone, like people like it sauced differently. Some people think there should be coleslaw on, on the pulled pork sandwich. Uh, uh, signature pulled pork sandwich should be on a store-bought squishy bun. Ours is not because it doesn't travel well. Right. And, yeah, that no, that's, and that's a good point. And you do have coleslaw on yours. I, yes. I, I, I've never seen it served that way before. That's uh, sort of a, a very uh, Carolina-style 
uh, pulled pork. And, and and where where does the, the inspiration for these um, meals that you prepare? Where does it come from? Is it is it from experiences of traveling uh, through the southern states? Or? Uh, no, it's um, I am adopted of mixed race, and about uh, twenty years ago, I sort of. Uh, uh, was looking f uh, to find my culture through uh, food mm -hmm. and food and music. So uh, this is sort of the, the journey of, of my uh, adventure in food. And a fun and journey, journey it is. And, <laughs> and i got to point this out, too, because obviously people can't see, but you're a, a, a slim man. You're yes. not skinny. You're, you're, you're in good shape. I was thinking the same thing, because he's like all muscle, this guy. So I figured that, you know, basically he's eating fruit and nuts most of the day. <laughs> no, I'm it's running around like a madman all day. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, I somehow don't think if you're surrounded by this kind of food, you're eating fruit and nuts all day long. I don't know. It's just a wild guess. Um, any plans in, in the future for any kind of a... Uh, uh, expansion either to a I larger size? I am size. Looking, looking at that. I'm not going to commit on, on radio at this no, point. No, no, no. And, and I don't but I would you. like to do, if I was to do anything, I would look at uh, maybe doing more of express versions of what we do at the Stockyards because um, there is so much labor involved on the back end, what, what people do not see. Uh, for for the food to come out, as a chicken takes, you know, yeah, well, 48 eight hours, clean, ribs. Yeah, yeah and, and the pastrami, you know. Right. That's 21 days to do that. So as opposed to, so you'd have one central location that, that smokes the, the meat and prepares the, the chicken? and. Uh, I'm not sure if I would do a commissary. Uh, I'd probably just do more uh, burgers and fried chicken and keep it simple and less employees. Yeah. Yeah, and do you, do you find it when you when you look at the, the sales that it breaks down? Is there a demographic um, breakdown for those people who like, like, is it the older, the younger people want the ribs more than the older people? Is it men wanting uh, um, the sport more than women? Uh, demographically, if we look <coughs> at our burgers, you can see which burgers people like. The classic burger is yep. is will have more of an elderly crowd or ordering the the classic burger. Uh, when we have, we also have another burger called, which is an homage to uh, In and Out Burger. It's called the Animal Style, and it's an homage burger to the California chain, which we, you can't not hear. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's young boys, young men, ordering that, flying out the door. Yeah. Um, within the ribs, um, it's also a, a. You have to look at the cost per uh, per person coming out as well. So. That average cost, someone having ribs, is a much higher cost than someone coming and buying a burger. So it's, um, we have uh, more of our, our well-to-do customers sometimes are, are buying more ribs. Sometimes they'll buy like 10 racks, which is lovely. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 10 racks? <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm looking at your prices, and, and they're all very reasonably really priced. Reasonable. I mean, you got yes. the animal burger that you mentioned is like seven and a half bucks, and um, the... Uh, well, you go downtown, that, that burger is $14. Yeah, well, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm saying. The beef brisket. Mm -hmm. uh, bat. What is bat? It's a bacon, arugula, and a fried green tomato sandwich. Wow. On a ciabatta roll. Uh, it's actually on a sourdough roll. I think you have an older menu there. Oh, okay. That's a really interesting. Where, where did that come from? That uh, idea? Oh, I did that for Mike Bullard, actually, because he was... That's actually and a Ted joke. Says, who? <laughs> yeah. You made that just for Mike Bullard? Well, yeah, no. Um, that's, uh, you couldn't really get uh, fried green tomatoes in Toronto at all, so we thought let's uh, do a rendition on a, on a BLT. So, and that also showcases our bacon that we make in-house in as well. Now, you know what, and, and did you bring any of this bacon? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, well, I'll, 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 I'll just stop by and try it. Because, because I'll tell you why. Uh, um, I love bacon, but bacon doesn't like me. And it's one of those things, and yet I've had bacon that's 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 homemade bacon that, mm -hmm. that's not store bought, and it seems to sit okay with me. It's the stuff that you buy. I guess there's so many chemicals in it, whatever that that's probably what's fighting me from the inside. Uh, yeah, there's uh, nitrites, which mm -hmm. is what uh, gives a bacon or ham use the pink flavor and it's a uh, pink color. Sorry, and it also uh, uh, acts as a preservative. Right. Um, they could have nitrates, which uh, I think some of the larger producers would, would will use that. And it's also like if you're getting uh, from one of the larger companies, let's say, that takes them two days to make bacon because they tumble it, inject it, and, and fill it with water. And uh, ours takes 20 days to make bacon as well. If, if, if more people really understood the concept of, well, what do you mean? They do it in two and it takes you three weeks? 
but well, that's about getting that's the chair the way it's supposed to be done. That's in the old, the that way, we do it in the old time method. Maybe. That's the way it was done mm -hmm. years and years ago. That's right. And then along came chemicals and. Right. Uh, and you can still get your country hams down in the right. down the states that are still done within them. You know, it takes 18 months for them to make a yeah. a real country ham. Mm. Oh, good. We have to take a break. That means Ted can we sample, sample something, something else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have to. Yeah. I mean, but it's hard for me to do that because I got to talk. Tom Davis is our guest. He is uh, from the stockyards on the St.